Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Nico's Comic Book Calls and Reviews on the Late Night Chat Network. I'm your host, Nico, and today I will be discussing and showing off the books that uh, the collected edition comics that I hauled in the month of September 2021. And if you check back in a couple of days from the time that this is posted, I should have the uh, month of October 2021 posted up for you guys as well. I apologize for the lateness of uh, these uh, most recent comic book hauls. And uh, I look forward to showing these off, discussing kind of what I've read out of these, giving you guys quick reviews and thoughts on the stuff uh, that I have read, as well as the things that I've never read. But I'm looking forward to read the reading that I actually picked up in these months. Uh, this uh, for September, it's uh, there's actually actually for the next two couple of hauls uh, for September on, and October, there was actually even some books I, I picked up because it was a little bit of a lighter month, believe it or not, for me in those months. Uh, due to, I guess, maybe because the fact that some of the distributors are changing with uh, Marvel and uh, as well as, uh, you know, just because I know there's just regular de delays here now I, I, with a lot of these things, a lot of their collect editions have been getting pushed back a little bit. It seems like whether it's like distribution issues or um, issues, you know, I know that people are talking about now with the supply chain stuff happening, that there's delays and things being sent out around the world, as well as like paper shortages. You're hearing all kinds of things now these days. Uh, the fact of the matter is these collected editions will still come uh, all, all come out at some point. And, and it's not like we don't have enough to read anyways, as collectors, a lot of us that are in the, uh, you know, that collect a lot of these collected editions. So I'm not really concerned. I'm not really worried. It kind of gives you a chance to maybe pick up some things that you hadn't picked up previously, like I did in this month and uh, October's haul. Uh, as you will see, and then I will be discussing with you guys here and, uh, you know, and if not, maybe save some money because like, there's going to be like a whole lot of stuff that's going to come out around the same time with all these delays and pushbacks. Right. So, uh, the going into the new year, there's going to be a, probably a lot of very expensive months coming of collected editions for the omnibuses and things that we've been, uh, pre-ordering out here guys. So, yeah, I know there's been some concerns in the collected edition community. Um, so I briefly kind of wanted to bring that up here at the top of the video, but, uh, but yeah, you know, uh, once again, if you like these videos and you want to see more of them, you know, let me know what you thought of them in the comments section. Uh, make sure to hit that like button. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel, the Late Night Chat Network YouTube channel, where I've been re-uploading a lot of my old uh, comic podcasts that I do uh, for the Late Night Chat Network. Uh, like I uh, did trade talk episodes, which where I discuss like more of like um, longer form reviews of like what I do here, where I show off the halls. Like it, trade talks were like, the collected editions that I read every single week, I would get on there and, and speak about and actually review them and give you my thoughts on all those books. So if you ever wanted to, you know, all the show notes are up for those episodes. If you wanted ever wanted to know my reviews on a bunch of other collected editions, if you look at, we have a playlist up for that. That's trade talk. It's audio only. Uh, I've been re uploading them to YouTube it used to be a podcast. Uh, so there's no video on those ones, audio only, but it's my thoughts and reviews on a lot of the, uh, a lot of collected edition uh, comics that I was picking up the last couple of years previous to doing these videos. And uh, then we also have weekly wine comic time. That was uh, me and my girlfriend, Christine's uh, weekly reviews that we were giving on uh, single issue comics that we we're collecting. Uh, again, we haven't really done that for about a year now, I would say. Uh, so they're older episodes, but if you ever wanted to hear any of our thoughts, again, that's all documented with the show notes there. And we have a playlist up here on the late night chat network. There is some videos for that actually on the tail end of uh, doing that show, probably the last 10 episodes or so. Um, we actually started doing that on video as well. So those were a lot of fun. So yeah, if you're looking for more comic content, we got those up and also all of my hauls that I've been doing uh, throughout the year of 2021, maybe my first one, actually, I think it was December, 2020. So we're just rounding out to a year of these comic book hauls at this point. Uh, so stay tuned for more, hopefully more comic content. I still do want to do a tour of this room of my collection. Uh, I might have to break that up into segments depending just cause it might be a long video. Uh, so yeah, let me know in the comments if there's anything else you're looking forward to. If you do want to see more comic content, let me know and make sure you're subscribed to the channel, you know, tell people about this if they're into comics and without further ado, let's get into the monthly haul for September, 2021. I'm going to show off the books. Uh, like I said, uh, not everything had come out in this month of September, 2021. If there's things that are older releases, I'll mention that. And I'm going to start off today with actually showing off the books. Cause there's not many this time around that I haven't read. And then I'll get into the ones that I had read maybe previously and maybe I picked up the collection or that I've just read maybe a couple of months ago um, when they first came out upon release. Okay, so yeah, let's get into it.
All right. First up for the books that I hauled in September of 2021, out of the things that I've never read before, is the Doctor Strange epic collection, The Vampiric Verses. Uh, this is the 90s Doctor Strange series, I believe. Uh, this is volume nine of the epic collection. Yeah, this collects the 1990 to 1991 and collects uh, Doctor Strange Sorcerer Supreme 14 to 33 and Ghost Rider 12. I'm very much looking forward to reading this. Doctor Strange is one of my favorite characters. Um, you know, I, I've got all the epic collections that they've released uh, so far, except for the first one, because I got that omnibus of that. And uh, I'll, I'll I think there's a second volume, the omnibus coming out. So the first couple of epics, I won't end up double dipping with those, you know, unless I see them for cheap. You never know, because uh, I do like the omnibus format for some of that older stuff. Uh, of course, that first collection uh, has all the Steve Ditko uh, drawn stuff, Strange Tales, Doctor Strange stuff in it. Um, so yeah, but I'm very much looking forward to reading this. I've heard mixed things about the nineties Doctor strange series, but it doesn't mean that I, you know, I, I still want to check it out because I love the character. Uh, this is mainly written by Roy Thomas. I believe some of the other writers here, I know Howard Mackey, that was probably for ghost rider and maybe some other stuff here. Uh, maybe there was like, uh, and no, there's no annuals that were noted. So yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe there is some backups or something. There was some other writers that involved here clearly, uh, some of the big names here that I recognize, you got Butch Geis, uh, Jeff Isherwood, who drew a lot of this Doctor, uh, Doctor Strange Sorcerer Supreme series uh, in the 90s. He's known kind of primarily as a Doctor Strange artist. And then, of course, you got Gene Colan, who, again, you know, known as a uh, uh, Doctor Strange artist from, I think, stuff from the 70s, I think it was during that period of time. Ron Lim, of course, big 90s guy, Lee Weeks. Oh, even Jim Jim Valentino there. I guess when he was still working for Marvel prior to going to Image. So, so yeah, I'm very much looking forward to checking this out. Um, like I said, I love the epic collection format. I pick up all the Doctor Strange ones. Yeah, this is when Clea, I think, was still in the book around with him. She actually just made a reappearance. Oh, there's Mor Morbius, Michael Morbius. Looks like him anyways, yeah. Oh, Clea, what's going on here? <laughs> So yeah, this is back. Uh, so yeah, I'm definitely going to check this out. I haven't read any of the 90s stuff, but like I said, I have heard mixed things. Roy Thomas, though, very serviceable writer. I mean, he wrote, he's written so many comics. I mean, uh, you know, even to this day, I think he recently just did, uh, did some of the, um, I think he just came back to write like a Conan story. Of course, now that Marvel's got the rights to it again, maybe like a short in, uh, in the special that they had or something like that. Uh, he was on something most recently. So yeah. Doctor Strange Epic Collection. Really looking forward to it. There you go. That's the uh, the cover of this one here. So I've never read this, but uh, yeah, I'll pick up a, a most a, mostly any of the Doctor Strange Epic Collections because there's so much material I think that hasn't been collected. Of course, this stuff has previously been collected in the two Doctor Strange Sorcerer Supreme omnibuses that came out with the, all of the '90s material, and. Um, and so, yeah, that stuff has been collected, but there's a lot of that stuff, the older stuff too, I don't feel has. And uh, the Epic Collection format is a, is a great way to collect it all. So there you have it. Okay, then the next we got the first of two EC collections that recently came out. Now, I missed these uh, the first time around that they came out. I wasn't really buying collected editions. So by the time um, I got into buying a lot of comic collected editions and into the hobby more, these EC archives that were collected by uh, Dark Horse and I think Gemstone. Like there was a couple of different publishers, I think, that were publishing a lot of these. I think Dark Horse had uh, printed hardcovers of this material as well. And a lot of it was out of print and expensive and hard to find. So I just uh, ne had, had never even bothered uh, tracking them down. Now Dark Horse is re-releasing these. Uh, I guess of several of the EC comics series in these cheap, affordable paperbacks. And they're like, you know, they're uh, uh, the dimensions of the book are a little bit uh, larger than like your regular uh, trade paperback that you, you'd come to expect from like, you know, just a Marvel, like even the Epic collection for scale here, if you want to see like, this is the size of the Epic collection, which is like a regular size paperback. It's a little bit more on the uh, top and sides, obviously a little bit wider, so, uh, so yeah, I'm very much looking forward to checking these out. I've been, I picked up the Tales of the Crypt one, which came out first. And in the month of September, there was two other volumes that have come out. And uh, it looks like they're, I guess, 
going to maybe re-release like a few of them and all the first volumes and then maybe do a round of the second volumes in the series and all that. And uh, Dark Horse, I mean, this is just a very affordable package. These retail at uh, $19.99, I believe. Yeah. And I mean, if you have a discount somewhere, you're able to get it for even cheaper. This is a hell of a deal. I mean, these are classic stories, horror stories and uh, sci-fi and suspense stories that like everyone talks about from this era, the EC comic stuff. Lots of legendary artists worked on this stuff. Uh, I've never read any of this stuff just because, like I said, it was hard to collect previously. This is all in color. But these cheap, affordable paperbacks, if this is the way they're going to continue to bring these out for a few of these series, I'm on board. Like, I'm really into these, even if it takes me a while to actually get around to reading them. And I don't feel like this stuff is stuff you kind of want to sit there and read a whole bunch of at one time. Maybe, you know, you could check it out, read a couple stories, then, you know, come back to it, put it down, come back to it. Uh, you know, I, I think if you read too much at once, it's just not as fun. Uh, personally, I don't think they were made to be read that way. I'm finding there's a lot of comics where there are shorter stories or comic strips or things like that. Long running series, like you saw you Jimbo, things like that. I think they're better in small portions. Like, I don't think they were meant for you. They're not serialized. Like, you know, like a Vertigo series where it's like a 60 issue story, like an older one, you know what I mean? Like things like that. Like, I think things like this, you can kind of get your fill, enjoy it, and then come back to a little bit later. I found it's much more enjoyable to read things like that for when it comes to stuff like this. So, uh, yeah, I'm very much looking forward to this. So this one collected the, uh, this is the shock suspense stories, EC archives. This, uh, collects, uh, the first six issues of that series. There's the covers on the back here. I guess the original covers of these. And uh, the, the other EC release that came out this month is the Vault of Horror. This is also an EC Archives uh, one. There you got the Vault Keeper right there. It's kind of like, you know, forward by R. L. Stein. I mean, these are things, these got, these are stuff like these horror comics that I'm sure inspired R. L. Stein. And, you know, they got like the whole creep show thing with Stephen King back in the day that came out as a graphic novel. So, yeah. So these are, again, classic horror stories. Uh, you know, the Crypt Keeper, like this is one of the, this is the uh, Vault Keeper, but then there was the Crypt Keeper, of course, from Tales of the Crypt. There was a few, a few of these different characters, right, that they had the EC Comics. This is actually a very uh, classic cover. I've seen this uh, done before, like other people have kind of tried to recreate their versions of this and kind of stuff. Like I've seen this cover before a lot. It's kind of like uh, even etched in my mind, even though I had never read the material. I've seen it around being just a fan of comics uh and uh you know people trying to pay homage to that kind of stuff right so very much looking forward to this um there's also i think the sci-fi the ones that are going to be coming out in uh the next few months i forgot all of the ec titles but i'm sure as i pick them up i will go over them in my uh you know they have crypt of terror in my uh halls so look forward to that i know i am and uh yeah i'm just really happy to finally have these in some sort of a format here Again, $19.99 for this. So, like, it's very affordable, very cheap. But get them now as they're coming out, guys, because I guarantee you these will go out of print quick, too, I'm sure, these paperbacks, because uh, I'm sure this is uh, kind of more of a niche thing. Like, anybody who's a fan of these or knows about their importance and how hard they are to come by will scoop these up, and then uh, they may not reprint them again, right? It's taken them this long to reprint them in paperback because they just finished the line of EC archives from Dark Horse and Hardcover. And this contains volume one, the Vault of Horror, 12 to 17. So, yeah. And the reason for that is if you're asking why I collected, it started the collection at number 12. It's from what I told, what I, what I understand, same with the uh, Tales of the Crypt one, is that these were series that were called something previous to it being changed Vault of Horror. So, like, I think when they started changing their branding on a lot of their comics back then, because they're, you know, I, I, I don't know if it was in this case, but I know a lot of things, they would do, like, romance stuff, and then it would be, like, crime comics and then and then it kind of was like a whole slew of horror comics so like there was a lot of things that they kind of like they didn't sell well they would just stop production of it and then basically change the title and, and continue to bring the comics out so i'm sure that is the reasoning behind why this happened and this is why it's starting with number 12 because they probably just got re renamed to that at that time all right, so next up, these are going to be the books that I have actually read that I ended up hauling in the month of September 2021. Uh, first up, we got a little bit of manga. We got Witch Hat Atelier, Atelier uh, or Atelier. I don't really know how to pronounce it. Please let me know in the comments, guys. And also let me know in the comments if you do have any comments about the EC comic stuff that I just showed a moment ago. I'd be very interested to learn more about that stuff. 
or, you know, as always, let me know, guys, what you've picked up out of this stuff. Uh, if there is things that you have read that I hadn't read out of my pile of things that I said I hadn't, I'm interested to hear about them, interested to hear your thoughts and keep this conversation of comics going, guys. So thank you. Thanks for tuning into these. So which had to tell you, uh, this is the uh, this is a manga I was put on to a little while ago. Um, I got to say, just by kind of like the wow. <laughs> so there you go. So my biggest draw in this comic is the art. I mean, I would have loved if I would love if this gets recollected, this manga in like a more oversized uh, format after the series actually concludes. Because I know with some of this manga from some of these companies, they do bring them out in more deluxe oversized formats. Uh, I wouldn't mind that at all. I think the art is beautiful in this. Uh, I should say the artist, the, uh, the writer here is Kamomi Shirahama. And if I'm saying that wrong, my apologies. I guess they just won an Eisner for uh, it's an Eisner winner. Now this comic book series, uh, this manga series, I should say, and it's uh, published by uh, Kodansha. So uh, I, yeah, I got put onto this series. I mean, it's kind of, it's basically a series again about a bunch of young magicians. I know everyone likes to make the reference to like Harry Potter now these days because of that. Um, I mean, this is a bunch of magicians being taught in, in a, in a school or under the tutelage of another uh, more advanced magician, let's say, in a world of 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 humans that they also have to share with these people that uh, uh, these witches that basically know that magic and but they all demonstrate magic by actually drawing pictures like illustrations. So they're all kind of they're they're able to draw emblems and and things that actually come to life off the page and then reflect uh, mad, like actually uh, turn into magic or, uh, or grant them uh, magical powers of some sort, or actually will bring things to life and, 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 and stuff like that. Like that's how they cast their spells essentially. So, yeah, so it's very interesting. It's, you know, a concept I don't think I've encountered before uh, on paper though, that concept isn't necessarily something that I think that would intrigue me or, or send me running to check out this book. But uh, I mean, the art is amazing. Uh, the story is, is is really fun, and uh, I like the characters. And yeah, it's just it's just a, a fun, delightful book. I I actually really quite enjoy it, and I'm glad I checked it out, and I'm glad I'm still reading it eight volumes in, and I'm keeping up with it. And this is nothing. That I, this is not something I'll be dropping anytime soon. I I don't know how long this book has been going on for. I think it's still running in Japan, but I might be wrong. I'm not positive on that. Um, but I, I am learning that more and more people are, are checking this book out and becoming fast fans of it. So I'm, I'm very happy to hear that. I think it's definitely worth your time. And if that kind of genre stuff, like the stuff that I mentioned, uh, that, uh, you know, it does intrigue you. If you do like magic, you do like Harry Potter. If you do like stuff like that, like I just mentioned, then this is an easy sell. Honestly, I mean, look at this art. You, you definitely got to check this out if that's the case. So and, uh, you know, it, made, it was something that I didn't know I was going to like, but I ended up really enjoying. So there you go. All right. Next up, we got uh, Dead, Dead, Dead Demons, DDD Destruction, Volume 10. <laughs> yes, yeah, one of the most complicated uh, titles out there currently. Dead, Dead Demons, DDD Destruction, Volume 10 by Inio Asano. Very popular uh, mangaka, um, you know, the artist and writer essentially of this. And uh, yeah, this is this was a great volume. It's been a while since the last volume came out here, translated in English, I feel. At least it's felt like a long time. This, of course, is printed by Viz Media here. Um, but yeah, we're, we must be coming to the conclusion of this story at some point soon. I would think it really does feel like it. There is big things happening in the story right now without get, getting into it and spoiling it. But this what well, probably was my favorite volume in the last couple of volumes from what I can tell. So, uh, yeah, a lot of big things happen in this one, moving the story along, uh, great character development, great art, of course, as always in, 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 you know, Asano book. I am a fan of his stuff. Not everything he's done. Uh, it, this is definitely, a, I think, got a unique tone compared to some of his other books, which can be, you know, a range from anywhere to quite depressing to, uh, you know, to scary in a way. And like, um, you know, even like kind of, he does great slice of life stuff as well. I mean, and he's able to capture a lot of, unfortunately, the sadness and, and, uh, and stuff, uh, and I guess horror and, and, and a lot of like human type things than his stories as well. Right. So, uh, this is a story about aliens that kind of came down to earth that are, there's a big UFO structure that's like hovering over the earth that the earth, the people, the humans have been living with for the last little while, as you can see there. Uh, and yeah, and kind of like about the ongoing world around them, um, how they, you know, their day to day 
how they interact with the aliens, stuff about government, politics is mixed in here, as well as relationships between these group of children that are in the book that also become friends with one of the aliens. This is kind of how they look like, and they, you know, uh, it's the art's wonderful. A um, lot of crazy, you know, action actually went down in this in this whole volume, as you can tell here, without spoiling too much. You definitely got to check this out. Wow, look at that one of all the aliens. <laughs> so yeah this is uh i i again i don't know i'm sure this has concluded uh in japan and we're still getting volumes out here i can't see it going on for too much longer it does feel like there is a conclusion coming soon but it, i do really really enjoy the series and just when i thought the last couple of volumes may have been a little bit more duller than I, than what i had come to expect from this series this volume was really really great so yeah all right, then we got Hell's Paradise, Jigo Kuraku by Story and Art by Yuji Kaku. This is, of course, by Viz Media as well. This is the signature line as well as the last one I just talked about, Viz Signature. Yeah, this is kind of like, you know, the, not shonen jump manga. It's more of like the mature manga line, I would say, for adults. Uh, if you had to make a comparison between the two, uh, I believe that's what the signature line is for. Uh, and what the nice thing about these ones too, is that actually the, uh, compared to like a regular size manga, here I'll just show you with, uh, like most of the other shonen manga size, like I'm just going to grab a volume of one punch man here. Um, uh, it's a little bit bigger in scale as you can see there just for comparison's sake. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, this is this is coming to a conclusion. I think there's maybe only two or three more volumes of this. This has already concluded, from what I understand. I think it's going to be twelve or thirteen volumes, all said and done. It's a you know a story about uh, an island with some crazy fucked up shit that's happening on it. That all these uh, samurai uh, prisoners, uh, uh, sorry, and prisoners, uh, some of them also samurai and or ninja that were taken to uh, this island, and then once they get to the island. They were tasked with like I figuring out maybe the secrets of this island. And then it's obviously not what anybody has bargained for. Now the government now has come in to kind of rein things in, it seems like in this volume, and everything's coming to a head. And you know, half the people that originally came to the island are dead. Uh, apologies, there is spoilers, some that I'm giving out here right now, but again, just trying to give a brief overview of the story where we're at now and as it is concluding in the next couple of volumes. I really, really enjoyed this. I, I like the art, I think it's good. Uh, it's not, you know, not, not something that's blown me away in the sense that it's not like a automatic classic or anything, but it has been very entertaining. And as a short lived series, uh, for a manga, I definitely would suggest checking this out. If any of that sounds, uh, enjoyable to you. And the last manga out of this pile anyways, for the month of September, 2021, we got fist of the North star volume two from Viz media. Also, I believe out of their signature line. Yes. And, uh, this is a hardcover um i really like the presentation on all these hardcovers i mean even with the, the blood splatter of each one different characters on the front of them so far that you're you're you know coming across in the story uh, i i gushed about the first volume when i hauled it here on the channel how much i loved it how much i had heard about it for so long but it wasn't any of this the translations were the earlier i guess paperback um printings of these which weren't many and they may have even come out with issues some of them in english anyways I, I couldn't find any of them they're hard to come by and whatever and i don't think it's ever been fully collected in english uh or if it has it was a long time ago early 90s most likely uh i really really wanted to check this series out and it delivered man it's just a great action-packed like mad max style kind kind of story with this guy <laughs> you know this fist of the north star dude that's just like Oh man, he just he just whoops all kinds of ass in this. Like they're, they're, the plot's very loose plot. He definitely comes across. Like I said, it is a very Mad Max ish type of um, vibe and post apocalyptic kind of like wasteland that this guy is kind of walking through and coming across people. You know, taking people hostage, hostage, fighting over supplies, and he's just trying to make his way through this world, man. And he doesn't like a lot of these guys, so he he he. He ends up like whooping a, a serious amounts of ass. It's very violent, very bloody, oh, <laughs> all kinds of all kinds of action. I honestly love the book. Uh, it's uh, just really well illustrated and uh, and and a lot of fun. And you know, not huge plots or anything. And uh, yeah, I just I just love it. I love everything about it. It's it's simple and to the point and fun and action packed. And uh, and it's, it's you know great art and guys just whooping ass what more can you ask for <laughs> i hope they continue bringing these out every two or three months of course this is a story by bronson art by tetsuo hera 
And uh, I love these hardcovers that they have been coming out with. I think it's going to be 20 something volumes all said and done from what I understand from like the amount of that they're, they're collecting in each one of these hardcovers. And uh, if they continue to bring these out every two, three months, I'm going to be a very ha happy camper. So definitely check out Fist of the North Star. Great manga. All right. Then we got Swamp Thing. This is New Roots. This is written by uh, uh, Mark Russell, as well as stories by Phil Hester and uh, Andrew Constant and uh, art by Marco Santucci, Tom Mandrake, John Callas, Hi-Fi and Colors, I believe. And, uh, oh yeah, John Callas on Colors and then Hi-Fi, I guess, on maybe the Colors in the other story. So this consists of online uh, digital first comics, I believe. Um, the Swamp Thing Giant 1 to 5, I guess, printed these. And additional stories published digitally as Swamp Thing New Roots 7 and 9. So they came out with these Swamp Thing anthology style kind of issues that they brought out as well as like the digital content. I believe the 7 to 9 New Roots stuff, some of that is the Phil Hester written stuff. Uh, drawn by Tom Mandrake. And then the other stuff here that was in the Giants, I believe, is the Mark Russell, uh, Mark Russell, uh, drawn by Marco Santucci stories. Uh, I'm sure they were in both. They probably just collected a lot of that stuff together and threw it in here uh, for a collection's sake. I'm glad they did. I, I quite enjoyed this. Um, I think Phil Hester did a good job. And uh, Tom Mandrake, of course, you know, who drew the, the Spectre, Martian Manhunter and all these books definitely is a good artist for like horror and stuff like that back in the 90s that I, I've enjoyed. He was good as well, although I don't I didn't say as good as he used to be, uh, you know, back in the day. But that's understandable. Uh, here's some of his stuff right here, I think, here in the back. Yeah, so that's yeah, that's Tom Van Mandrake. So that's the Phil Hester stuff. The Phil Hester stuff, although he has a good take, he's worked on the character, he's drawn the character, and I think that was from Mark Miller back in the day. He did some Swamp Thing. So, yeah, he's got a good voice for the character. He gets the character. It was good, but the guy, the reason I picked this up is because Mark Russell had wrote, written some Swamp Thing. Of course, Mark Russell, who has kind of been uh, known now as a guy who... Uh, definitely talks about he has a lot of social commentary on stuff that's going on in the world so his voice actually worked out quite well i think for this character because swamp thing uh you know uh, has a long history of dealing with a lot of environmental type issues and commenting on it and stuff with and his and his relationship with humanity and there's a lot of that in this and i think that he does a good job of doing it each kind of story in this is a quick one and done with the great marco santucci art um i really enjoyed it i mean they kind of all had a through line of some sort but most of the stories were one and done uh stories about his run-ins with people you know disturbing him in the bayou here wherever he is in the Ever everglades i forgot where the hell he is at this point in time in the story uh has been a little bit since i've read it now but uh but yeah i really i really really enjoyed it um i gotta say mark russell i think had a good voice for it I like Swamp Thing a lot. So, I mean, if you're a Swamp Thing completionist or you just really love the character and you just want to pick up the good stuff, I think this won't, I don't think this trade will let you down. I, I was quite, I quite enjoyed it and uh, it was good. And uh, like I said, love Marco Santucci on art and Mark Russell. I like his voice for, I think it worked well for Swamp Thing. And then a little lesser known comic, possibly to some of you guys. This is from Ahoy Comics. Who I, I I pick up a you know actually uh, they, I aforementioned Mark Russell actually does a few books for them actually uh, at the moment uh, as well and uh, and I pick up those ones but I've also picked up I got put onto this book called The Wrong Earth now I think this is the third trade paperback that's come out uh, they've done they've been doing like these little mini series essentially um, of the ongoing stories of these two characters as Dragonfly Man and uh dragonfly yeah dragonfly and dragonfly man now essentially this was a superhero story being told that's uh a, you know kind of meta, like it's commenting kind of on comics itself like uh i think the dragonfly is like an old school version of a of a superhero character and then the dragonfly man uh, actually i might have the the two mixed up but one of them is basically like the frank miller dark knight comics are gritty and serious type of tone and uh one of them's like the old school golden age like kind of like a uh, throwback kind of uh you know even like batman like campy kind of um, tone uh, type character so these guys end up in each other's worlds, switch over essentially and uh then you got the dark and gritty version in in a, in a, in, a, in the old you know campy kind of version of the comics and then you got the the campy version in the dark and gritty kind of style 
uh, world. And that was consisted of the first volume. And then they came out with another volume that is like kind of outside of the main series. Um, it wasn't drawn by Jamal Igel, who drew the first volume of this, which is fantastic. This one looked great as well with Juan, Juan, Juan Castro on inks. Um, that was kind of like a just, I guess, past stories of these two characters that didn't tie into this main series. And now, anyways, this is basically like the second volume continuation of the first mini series that's come out after these two characters have been living in each other's worlds. This is continuing that story about them going back to their worlds and, and or at least coming to terms with the fact that they do have to go back and kind of, you know, hijinks ensue. People, you know, attack them, kind of foil their plan in this. And uh, and it's about their relationships with one another as well as their sidekicks, right? Because there's, you know, there's the one world where the dark and gritty one, his sidekick's been killed, essentially like the Robin of this situation, if this is the Batman, uh, you know, um, pastiche and then the um in the other world the the younger version in like the you know the old uh, 60s golden age kind of era hasn't been corrupted by like the bad stuff that the other guy has and he kind of feels for him and he actually feels really bad that and he's been lying to him this whole time and pretending that he's the version of dragonfly that he is uh familiar with but he's not and uh, and since the start of this, they really haven't kind of met up with one another since this whole switch over. So now they kind of have to face each other in this and come to terms with all this. And they and the one guy doesn't want to leave his his new sidekick behind because the version of his sidekick in his world had died. So for him to go back to his time, he has to come to terms with the fact he's going to end up losing his sidekick once again. This uh, so. So yeah, it's just it's really a lot of fun. I mean, it is a definitely a simple setup in that sense. Like I'm sure this has been done in other things before, but it being outside of the big two main comics, I think they have a, they're able to have a lot of fun with this. And uh, and if you are a fan of superhero comics or a commentary on it and like the tropes that kind of are involved in it, I think that there's a, it's a good team behind this. This is written by Tom Pear. Uh, Jamal Igo and uh, Igo on the art, which looks fantastic, and Juan Ca Juan Castro on the inks. This is the wrong Earth, night and day from Ahoy Comics. Definitely check this out. I think it collects the first the, the five issues, six sorry six issues I think of this mini series. All right, one of the most uh, unexpected, exciting things that I read out of this haul is uh, Marjorie Finnegan, Temporal Criminal. This uh, collects the first four issues of this uh, series that's come out from Upshot Comics. I picked this up mainly because of the creative team, and this is written by Garth Ennis, who I'm a huge fan of, and uh, Goran Suzuka, who's done a lot of work over at DC and some Vertigo stuff, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, who's also very good. Um, I believe, yeah, Miroslav Merva is the colorist on this. Now, I've never picked up anything from this newer publisher as of yet, but again, because based on this creative team, I was willing to give this a shot. I should say as much of a, a fan I am of Garth Ennis, though, uh, he works for all kinds of different publishers these days, and everything he comes out isn't always a home run, I find nowadays. So, like, I haven't, I don't love, like, his consistency level for me in recent years hasn't been as great as it has obviously previously through the 90s and stuff like that doing the vertical work the preacher stuff and then going even to the into the 2000s with a lot of the things he did people like you know like the like i really enjoy the boys and stuff like that so like you know i i'm a huge fan of his uh, but i haven't loved everything he's done in, in recent years uh you know punisher max of course i love you know all the nick fury stuff he's done uh, i love uh, yeah he's one of my favorite writers still this is a lot of fun. I don't hear anybody talking about this book. This is a very thin trade paperback. It may have, I mean, it was solicited as a, solicited as a paperback. It may have, uh, some people might look at this and look, think it's just like one of those like catch up issues where they try to recollect all of the issues that came previous to kind of get people into the series. Uh, this is only going to be an eight issue mini series last I heard. So this collects the first four. Um, but yeah, this was a hell of a lot of fun. I thought the art was great. She's basically a girl that's going through time, fucking it up, doing a shitty job of it. Of like, she's stealing things throughout time. Uh, it's just it was this captured a lot of the great humor that Garth Ennis can have. I thought the Gore and Suzuka art was fantastic. I thought the dialogue was great. I thought it was really a lot of fun. It reminds me, it's right up there with a lot of the funniest things I've read by Garth Ennis. If you do like his humor, um, it's just a hell of a lot of fun. It's time. It's a time travel story with a with a chick who's a thief and a badass and she's got a twin sister who's actually part of like these, like she is a responsible time person that uh, 
um, goes through time and and like helps out like whatever like the time police are in this book essentially. And her other twin sister, uh, the one without the eye patch here that was seen previously, is uh, is a straight up criminal. Like she goes around and she she does all kinds of shit in different timelines. She fucks shit up. She steals things. She's irresponsible. Uh, but she's out there having fun doing her thing. And this is basically her trying to track her twin sister down who's causing a lot of shit. And there's other people, you know, in, in their midst trying to, uh, be involved with what's happening here too, that are after them. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a hell of a lot of fun I'm trying to be vague that so as not to spoil everything here. For some reason there's a character that looks like the devil here. I won't comment anymore on that, but it's, uh, it's a hell of a lot of fun. Honestly, this went places the art was great it was funny and i love time travel stories so i really really enjoy this and i'm I'm sad to see that it's going to only be an 80 issue miniseries but i cannot wait for the second volume of this to end out that series all right then we got captain marvel strange magic this is the next volume in kelly thompson's run on captain marvel for marvel comics of course uh yeah volume six and this collects issues 27 to 30 uh you know uh written by kelly thompson with art by jamie mckelvey in this one david lopez jacapo camagni triona farrell and aspen gruntejern some of those names i'm sure i butchered so my apologies those are all on the art duties uh of course uh some of them are the color artists here and uh david lopez mostly on issue 27 and then jacopo camagni on 28 to 30. jamie mckelvey also had like a small like backup story uh at the end there that he wrote wrote and drew um i love jamie mckelvey's work so that was cool to see him in this yeah this is again like i've talked about this like in halls previous uh i still really big fan of this series i haven't read a lot of captain marvel i mostly checked this out for kelly thompson because i love her voice for her characters that she writes she always got a really fun cast of characters in it and uh yeah i mean this has gone on quite a while this run i hope that they collect this in an omnibus format after after the series kind of concludes or kelly thompson ends her run at least and uh and yeah i would definitely double dip and pick it up and get rid of the paperbacks that's how much i really enjoyed this series i think there's a variety of different good artists on it uh, it hasn't been consistent in that sense on the art teams, but I always feel that there's, you know, a serviceable artists and more than serviceable at times, some really great artists that have worked on this book. Yeah, apparently she hooked up with Dr. Strange in this. I ended up reading it, but again, it's been a while, uh, you know, since this video is late. So I don't remember everything that has happened, but I do know. Oh yeah. There's a lot, again, this is the outcome of a lot of the, uh, time travel stuff with her. Um, yeah, that's right. Yeah, so I won't get into all of it. There's a lot of spoilers. There's a lot of stuff with the Enchantress and her future son and everything. Uh, you know, she she's uh, she's made some questionable decisions and uh, and trusted uh, herself to the Enchantress in this one. And you know, shit just kind of goes sideways in this. I, I just really love the characters. I love the cast, and I love Kelly Thompson's voice and humor. Uh, and yeah, still enjoying Captain Marvel. And I am also still enjoying Black Cat. This is Black Cat. I'll take Manhattan. This is volume five of the Black Cat series. Uh, this collects uh, issues five to seven and Black Cat annual number one. If you're asking how can we only be uh, on uh, issues five to seven uh, on volume five, it's because they've con constantly started and restarted this series. It seems like it was only, always on the brink of cancellation because, you know, it is it is an ongoing Black Cat series, which is, I guess, very rare. But I think Jed McKay has done a great job of kind of coming back with these different storylines that have been involved in uh, some of the events that have gone on at Marvel uh, more recently. I think King in Black was the last one. Yeah, Queen in Black was the last volume. And uh, and yeah, this has just been like a little fun series about her capers. Uh, again, Jed McKay, one of the newer uh, comic writers that uh, I've really enjoyed a lot of his work. And uh, Michael Dowling was the artist uh, on these issues five to seven. And then you got the annual which wasn't as good. I feel uh, Joey Vasquez on art, uh, but I still enjoyed it. But I love the main series issues of this. And uh, again, this is, uh, you know, just follows her and her capers and her cast of characters that, you know, that are with her in this book. And uh, yeah, I have a lot of fun every time this comes out. And I think, uh, yeah, uh, likewise, if they come out with a bigger collection of this, I would probably end up picking it up. Yeah, I can't believe saying that about Black Cat series. I really am surprised about by this one, but Jed McKay is doing good work. All right, now we're getting to some of the oversized hardcover slash omnis here at the end of the haul. This is Gideon Falls Deluxe Edition Volume 1, which collects the first half of the series from Image Comics. 
written by Jeff Lemire, art by uh, Andrea Sorrentino, sorry, Andrea Sorrentino and uh, Dave Stewart on colors. And uh, I'm a huge fan of Lemire and Sorrentino, uh, you know, ever since I know Sorrentino's work, I first seen with the new 52 uh, I vampire book. And then Lemire shortly worked with them after that on the green arrow run of new Fe uh, new 52. They've just announced, I think a new horror book that's called mythos. That's going to come out from image comics, Gideon falls. I've read it all in issues. So this is kind of a double dip for me. Cause I wanted to get uh, re up and get the collected edition deluxe edition when these were announced. And uh, this was great. This is great. Uh, it's hard to explain. It's a very trippy, surreal kind of book. But if you're a fan of these two on anything they've worked on previous to this, um, or if you're into horror, or if you're into Jeff Lemire's writing, definitely check this out. Uh, I know on Andrea Sorrentino's work isn't for everyone. I've heard some people that don't like his stuff. I think it works really well for this series, though, even if you aren't a fan of his. Uh, again, some of the just like... It's a very trippy, surreal type story being told in this Gideon Falls. So I, I really quite enjoyed it. I enjoyed it the whole way through in this oversized format. Deluxe edition from Image Comics. It looks beautiful. It, it, it's a great presentation. Uh, so definitely check this out. Again, I don't want to spoil too much. It is hard to explain anyways, I think, the storyline and the places it goes. So I'll leave it at that. But I, I can't you know, say enough good things about this. I really enjoyed it. And this collects the first 16 issues of the series. So the second hardcover will complete the series. Uh, I don't know if it has been announced yet, but I'm sure it'll be coming out soon. All right. So there you go. Gideon Falls. And I think it's got an option for a TV show or something, if I'm not mistaken. All right. Next up, we got... The oversized hardcover of Marauders Volume 1, one of the funner series, I think, that's spun out of the whole Jonathan Hickman, um, uh, you know, restructure of the X-Men, essentially, uh, Reign of X era, Dawn of X, whatever you want to call it, because I know there's been different, you know, different different eras with the different spin outs of different books, uh, spin offs that have come out of the main series that uh, Hickman started with House of X and Powers of Ten. And uh, I've really liked uh, Marauders. This is written by Jerry Duggan, who's now writing the ongoing X-Men series, who's, whose work I'm a uh, big fan of. I really like his stuff. And art by Matteo Loli, for the most part, I believe, on these issues. But then, you know, you got some other people, Michelle Bandini, Lucas Wernick, Mario Del Panino, and Stefano Caselli. And, uh, yeah, I really like this book. This is, like, this is the one where... You know, uh, Kitty Pride essentially becomes a pirate. Like uh, the Marauders are these people that you know uh, sail the seas and uh, deal with uh, you know uh, trades, basically uh, uh, doing uh, trades for the White Queen, Emma Frost, who's on the council and this new status quo of the X Men uh, as part of the Krakoa, and they deal with a lot of the the stuff that uh, trades and uh, barters and stuff like that, things that are ha bar bartering on the sea, like that uh, are happening throughout the book. They also end up saving mutants in their travels. And it's just a really fun book. Emma is in this quite a bit. I actually really, really like his voice for Emma, Jerry Duggan and the end of Kitty pride for that matter. She's kind of the captain of the crew and she reports to Emma. Then they kind of work together for the most part, those two. And I believe they're both on the council at this point as well for their side as well with uh, Sebastian Shaw uh, but yeah, there's been great artists, I think, that has worked on this uh, book. Uh, as I mentioned, I, I like Jerry Duggan's writing, and this was just one of the more fun and funny titles that came out of that first wave of X-Men books that I've stuck with. And uh, I ended up reading these in issues, and hey, there's Batrock the Leaper. And uh, and yeah, I ended up now collecting this in the oversized hardcover that has come out. I believe one more volume, because they just announced that, I think, with Marauders issue 27, it is going to wrap up the series. And uh, probably the second hardcover will collect the second half of this. And I'll definitely be picking that up as well because I really, as I mentioned, quite enjoyed this series. So this first hardcover uh, collects the issues uh, uh, 1 to 12. And then I think after that, there's going to be some issues that are going to be collected in like the event oversized hardcovers like X of Swords and stuff like that books. That may be taken out of the second volume, but, uh, you know, if it ends at 27, you know, there's about, what, 15 more issues? Yeah, maybe it'll all be in the second volume of the hardcover, but, yeah, I'm glad to pick this up. And, yeah, uh, you know, fresh off the heels of the of the uh, cartoon series that uh, on Disney Plus here, um, this is the What If on the Best Volume 1 of the original What If series. 
I, I very much enjoy this series. I've, I collected all of the older issues previous to picking up this omnibus format years and years ago. I love the what if concept. If, you, if you've if you've seen the cartoon of what if now on Disney Plus and are a fan of that, it's basically the, the same concept. This is where it originated in these older comics from Marvel. And uh, I'm glad that they've been collecting them in these uh, oversized omnibus format because uh, they, I, it's also been revealed that there's a future solicitation that I guess that popped up on Amazon that's going to be collecting the late 80s, early 90s What If series as well, which maybe not as good because of just because of the level of uh, <laughs> talent and the fact that it's in the 90s that had come out at that time. But there is, again, a lot of fun concepts that come out of it. So I'll also be picking those up. The second volume, I think, is going to be coming out very soon, actually, of this omnibus, maybe even later this month in November or December, depending if it's been pushed back like a lot of the other omnibuses. But, uh, yeah, this is the original What If series. And uh, they, there's some great there's some great ones in here and a great level of talent that's worked on this. I mean, writers, Roy Thomas, Jim Shooter, Don Glutt, Jack Kirby, Gary Friedrich, Marv Wolfman, Stephen Grant, Peter Begillis, Tom DeFalco, Bill Mantlo, Gil Kane, Scott Shaw. And then you got the Pencilers, Jim Craig, Herb Trimpey, Gil Kane, Frank Robbins, George Tuska, Rick Hoberg, Alan Kupperberg, Jack Kirby, Sal Busima, John Busima, uh, Carmine Infantino, Tom Sutton, Pat Broderick, Gene Colin, uh, Walter Simonson, Ross Andrew, George Perez, like uh, uh, just a great lineup of people. And, uh, you know, what if, I mean, we got what if Spider-Man had joined the Fantastic Four? What if the Hulk had always had Bruce Brander, Banner's brain? Uh, you know, what if Captain America and Bucky had both survived World War II? Like, you know, there's all kinds of different interesting ones here. What if Dr. Doom had become a hero? And this collects uh, what if 1 to 22. So this is about half the series. The second omnibus will collect the second half because I think it went out just over 40 issues. And, uh, yeah, I mean, this is wonderful. I'm so happy to have this in this format. If you are a fan of the cartoon... Uh, you don't mind reading older comics because, you know, sometimes I know they can be overridden by today's standards. Uh, but again, to see where these stories originated, these fun ideas that they were able to put put uh, put together here for you guys. This is a great collection to have. They also have this collected in complete collections, which I think there's about four volumes of the complete collections, fat paperbacks that are out currently. So you can go that route or you can go the omnibus route, although I'm not sure if any of those volumes, they may be at this point out of print, some of those complete collection things. So I I, I prefer to have it in this oversized format for the omnibus because this is a series I know and love. If it's your first time checking it out, you're not used to reading older comics, maybe you try to read some online if you can find them. All right. Well, there you go. That's what if the original Marvel series on the best volume one. Very, very cool. And last, but certainly not least, we got the Captain America by Rick Remender on the best. Um, I, this is, I think, a very underrated run. I quite enjoyed this run when it had come out. Of course, I am a huge fan of Rick Remender's writing. It's probably not the best thing I think he's ever done, but I thought I really enjoyed it, especially the uh, the first bit that is drawn by um, uh, John Romita Jr. when he's in Dimension Z or X. I forgot what it's called. I think it's Dimension Z. Yeah, Dimension Z. So this collects uh, Captain America 1 to 25, Winter Soldier, The Bitter March 1 to 5, All New Captain America, Fear Him 1 to 4, and uh, All New Captain America 1 to 6, and Hail Hydra 1 to 4. So yeah, this was a lot of fun. This is the era where just before Sam actually took the mantle of being Captain America, but in the first, I think, 12 issues or so, it's like a very, again, I think uh, Remender had uh, said it was a uh, you know, like EC comics kind of inspired, like, you know, hard sci-fi kind of taken Captain America trapped in this dimension Z where he, uh, he's trapped in this dimension. He ends up having a son when he's out there. It's, it's really weird and wacky. And he kind of like, and then by the time I think he gets back, he becomes old again, spoilers guys. Sorry. It's just like, I'm trying to remember even in my own mind, kind of the, what exactly happened in this story because it was different and weird and, and fun and for some people they didn't like that right i mean and they got good john ramita jr art in these in this first arc honestly the dimension z stuff i thought it worked really well for his style john ramita again i know an acquired taste by some i i happen to really like his stuff that his work on this series uh so i had to own this but i'm also a big rick remender fan as i said so yeah just like lots of weird and wonderful creatures and stuff that are going on in this dimension z stuff um, I thought he had a great inner monologue a lot of the time, Remender, for this type of character. And if you like, you know, stuff that he's done, like Black Science and stuff like that, you know he's got a taste and feel for the sci-fi side of stuff as well. 
and the tragic storylines of these people. <laughs> so yeah, a lot of fun. I went, I really quite enjoyed it. Yeah, and then by the end, I think that kind of sets up uh, the whole. Um, Oh yeah, maybe it wasn't he wasn't old right when he came back from Dimension Z. Actually, I mean, I think I'm remembering that. Oh yeah, because that's the yeah the green skull. There's something else that happens to him where he ages. I might be wrong about saying that it was from he came back from Dimension Z. So just ignore me saying that. See, I don't think I'm spoiling anything for you guys. <laughs> so yeah, there's the whole thing with Sharon Carter too. I think I think she also something happens to her as well. Let's say. So, yeah, it, you know, there was some stuff that was very odd even for a Captain America book. But if you read a lot of Captain America through the 90s, it definitely can get, you know, yeah, I think there he is there. There's age. It can definitely get weird and wacky at times. So that shouldn't come too much of a surprise to you. Yeah. And this is where um, Falcon becomes Cap in this issue. So, yeah. So there you have it, guys. This is the Rick Remender by Captain America by Rick Remender on the best. Very much looking forward to rereading this since I've read it in the past in issues when they first came out, but I'm a big fan of it. All right, well, that's going to do it for today, guys. Uh, thank you for checking out this video. Uh, if you did like what you saw here today, please hit that like button once again and make sure, sure you're subscribed to the channel here to the uh, on the Late Night Chat Network. There's all kinds of different videos and interests that we have along with my fellow co-hosts. And we also do the weekly late night chat live show where we kind of just get into all kinds of different topics and uh, of things of interest that uh, depending on the co-host that's on uh, that week, it's just me and a group of friends here on the late night chat network. Then we really love what we do and getting together and talking about what we enjoy. And, uh, and yeah, and there's all kinds of different things here. Check out our videos, our playlists here on the late night chat network, YouTube page, and uh, hopefully more comic content to come. You can always look forward to these uh, monthly comic book hauls where I talk about the books, review them for you. And uh, as I mentioned previously, uh, older uploads of comic book related podcasts that I had done here uh, for the late night chat network stuff. So, uh, yeah, and if there's anything else you want to see, you, you, you want to hear me talk about, or if you have comments on any of the books I showed off here today, if you want to let me know what you hauled, if you want to have conversations about anything that I mentioned here, please hit us up in the comments here, and I will respond. And, uh, yeah, thanks again for watching these videos. Really appreciate it. Uh, more to come for me, hopefully, in that regard. And uh, we'll see you here. As I mentioned, in a couple of days, I'm going to be uploading the October uh, haul for 2021. So you got that to look forward to. And, uh, you know, we're already halfway through November, so we'll see when that comes out, guys, you know, uh, very busy all the time, but I do like doing these videos still and putting them out when I can. So thank you for tuning in as always. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.